Great. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another great day of the Lincoln County Planning Commission. I can tell from the agenda we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Right, Wendy? Lots of it. Loads. Yep. All right. We'll call this meeting to order, and I will do roll call. Commissioner Hogan. Here. Commissioner Scott. Here. Commissioner Albers. Here. Is Commissioner Poppins with us? Nope, not yet. Okay. And Commissioner Jungling is also here. All right. Approval of the meeting minutes. I assume everyone had their time to look at the meeting minutes from last month. Not any changes or thoughts? Seeing none, I'll do a roll call or I'll ask for a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve. Scott? I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, I will do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner, Al Commissioner Albers? Yes. And Commissioner Jungling is also a yes. All right. Next is the approval of the meeting agenda. Mr. Brown, is there any changes to the agenda? Uh, no changes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any changes you want to see on the agenda? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting agenda. I get a second for a meeting oh, agenda approval? Oh, sorry, I'll second, Scott. All right, motion second. And um, any discussion? I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. And Commissioner Jungling is also a yes. All right, at this time, I will ask um, is public input for anything not related to the agenda on tonight's well, agenda? So, if anything you want to speak, with us about or talk to us about that's not on the agenda, please feel free and, and state your name. All right. You know, I forgot to read that whole thing at the beginning, didn't I? <laughs> well, before we get into the public hearings, why don't I do that? So as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. The order of events tonight will be as follows. For each public hearing, staff will introduce the agenda item and present a summary of the staff report. The applicant will then be asked to explain the proposal in further detail and to answer any questions from the planning commission. I will then open the floor to public comment, first in persons in support of the application and then persons in opposition of the application. When you step up to the podium, please state your name, address, and speak into the microphone. Each speaker will have a chance to speak once they have a chance to speak once and should keep their comments to less than five minutes. Speakers are encouraged to only address new and relevant relevant information pertaining to the item. Above all, please be cordial to all meeting participants, refrain from side conversations, speaking out of turn, and please all comments address the commission up here. Lastly, Rezone applications will be scheduled for additional public hearing during the up count, upcoming County Board of Commissioners. So basically, we recommend to the Board of Commissioners on rezones, and they have the final say. Decisions on conditional use permits can be appealed to the County Board of Commissioners by submitting a letter to the County Planning and Zoning Office within five days of tonight. All right, so with that done, um, again, public input. Anyone have anything they'd like to talk about? Seeing none, I will close the floor and we'll go to uh, public hearings. Mr. Brown, number one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this first item is an application uh, from Sandy Wolfswinkle of k and Construction on behalf of the property owner, um, who is Kelly Nielsen. Uh, subject property is approximately 4,800 uh, feet southwest of the current city limits of Harrisburg. 
Uh, this uh, property is approximately 4.8 acres in size that's being petitioned to rezone. The full parcel is a little over 14 or 15 uh, acres in size. Um, the parcel size, as you can see, the current property um, had some single family dwellings and agricultural structures on it. The single family dwelling and most of the agricultural structures have been removed from the property. Uh, so the property is primarily what, I, what would they call unimproved or vacant. Um, uh, this app, this property was petitioned for a rezone in 2019 uh, from A1 Agricultural to C Commercial for just the portion of it, the 4.8 acres of it. Uh, tonight, the petition is to change the zoning from C Commercial to I1 Light Industrial. Uh, the applicant uh, intended at the time to do warehousing on the property, but has since identified the need to do more light manufacturing on the property. Uh, specifically, it'd be for a prefab wall manufacturing facility uh, for the property owner's business. Um, subject property is uh, within the growth area and subdivision authority of the city of Harrisburg. So what's a little bit different from 2019 is, is that the city of Harrisburg has jurisdiction over the platting and the what I'll call the land improvements of the property. Um, however, if you recall, we did go through an extensive um, review what I'll call engineering review of the property or the site before. And there was some agreements on improvements to the property to ensure uh, that there was no, um, that the site improvements weren't um, are disadvantageous to the property owners to the south of it because some of this area is in a floodplain. But with that, uh, staff in the staff analysis did identify uh, that this property is adjacent to. Um, a rural commercial industrial area as well as this is within the growth area of the city of Harrisburg. Therefore, staff's opinion is that this application is generally in conformance with your comprehensive plan. And so, um, again, staff would identify that that is generally in conformance with the, the goals and policies and land use of your comprehensive plan. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioner, is there any questions for staff? Yeah, yeah, Toby. Thanks. Um, so you, you said it's it's in compliance with the comprehensive plan with the with the county's comprehensive plan. Is that what you're referring to? Correct. Yep. And and that is because why it looks like it's outside that kind of corridor of the interstate or what? What are you what are you thinking there? So so I would my point being is is that it's adjacent to that area, um, and then second part of it is is that the properties to the south have like zoning or similar zoning to it. This area has been identified and developed as a commercial industrial area for I believe over 18 years. And so it's consistent with the land uses that are there now, as well as if you, if you defer to Harrisburg's comprehensive plan, they've identified this as a commercial industrial type area. Okay. But am I right then that the only access to it will be off this township road? Correct. Have you heard any feedback from the township on that? Um, not directly, but I have had discussions and then uh, Commissioner Elbers is here as well tonight. Can I answer any of those questions? <clears throat> I, I guess the second point that I'd make in, in addition to that too is, is that, um, and I did have some outreach from some, some neighbors or in that area and I pointed out, which I didn't point out just right now, is, is that this is the first step in the process if if the rezone is approved, the applicant will need to obtain a conditional use permit. Typically through the conditional use permit process is where we identify if there's any issues that need mitigating conditions and that. Uh, under state statute, under a rezone, we can't add any conditions nope. to this, but nope. it allows us in the next step to do that, so. Yep. All right, commissioners, any uh, further questions for staff? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. All right, at this time, I will ask the applicant to come forward and tell us a little bit about more about their plan. Hi, Kelly Nielsen. Um, got my office right there on, in the neighborhood of this property. We've owned it for oh, a few years now, just in like a, Toby had originally said, we were gonna do more of like a contractor storage sheds when we originally bought the property. And since then we've seen the need to create a business opportunity to build prefab walls for our home building business. And 
this land tends to service a better location for that versus the storage facility we were originally going to do. Should employ between, you know, initially the first few years will probably be four to six is all that will probably be there. But if it works, it should get up to probably 15 to 20 employees that would be How many was that, Kelly? 15 to 20. Okay. Because there will be a few office managers and then the labor side of it. All right, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? So uh, I'll ask the question that Commissioner Scott asked, if you talked to the township about uh, the increased travel and on that road? No, we did not, have not. And, and assuming your, your access point is gonna be off the township road? We're using the same access point as it was when I got zoned the original commercial. Um, and I'm not sure about this, but there, there's no city of Harrisburg sewer services out there right now. Correct. No. No. All right. Uh, along with talking to the township, have you talked to any of the neighbors um, on either side, on either side of the property? We just sent out the letter that was required or whatnot. Okay. Because we kind of, I mean, the property from commercial to the light and mass manufacturing should be less traffic versus having the storage units that were originally proposed out there is kind of how we feel. And it'd be just business hours, like just typical probably eight to five, maybe seven to four type hours. Mm -hmm traffic should be less than if it was commercial is how we feel how many storage units were you planning on putting out there I mean I'm trying to think like I know the size of the building but I'm trying to think how big the units would have been but I mean it's four acres and based on what I did on two and a half acres there'd probably be 150 storage units could have fit on there probably okay at the, of the bigger ones, I mean, if you go smaller than a yeah. more, but. <clears throat> All right, Commissioner, are you okay? Yeah. All right, thank you, Kelly. All right, at this time, I will ask anybody in favor of the application come forward and speak. All right. I will ask anybody in opposition to come forward and speak. Yes. Good evening. Um, my name is Deb Thompson, 47856 270th Street, Sioux Falls. I am the daughter of Bennett and Luella DeYoung, and they own the property um, 79 acres directly adjacent to the north of this property right here. They own this right here. Um, it seems like we were just here discussing this three years ago when he wanted to go from agricultural to commercial, and now we're here again. And this time is to ask to zone from commercial to light industrial in an area that is definitely residential. Yes, at the corner there are commercial lots. Everything across the road from this and north is all residential. Um, can you help me get some pictures up here, Toby? I have several. I'll try and condense this um, as much as possible. Right here? Okay. No. Okay. This. And I'm going to have trouble with this. This is the lot. This would be the driveway in. And as you can see, he's already started loading in fill dirt. Three years ago, one of the conditions of it being zone commercial was he was to put a drainage ditch along the north side of this lot. And this is the north side of the lot. This is what is adjacent to my parents' field. Weeds. All kinds of weeds. This is looking 
is looking from the driveway of my parents' field. This right here is Baker's Crossing. There, 79 acres adjoins Baker's Crossing, where these houses, I'm getting pretty good at this. I got to zoom this around, because I got to have it the right way. These houses that adjoin their land, this is their land right here. These houses in this cul-de-sac ranged in price from 750,000 to 1.75 million. This is definitely, if it were to be developed because of its proximity to Baker's Crossing, would probably be developed residential, not commercial, not light industrial, like the report indicated. This is a picture of the houses across the road. Again, this is the area he wants rezoned. This house, $500,000. This one, $260,000. This one, three sixty-five. dollars All along this road is residential. All residential. Now, I would like to ask you, commissioners, if this was your house, $500,000, right across the road, the person is asking to build not a small facility, it's 21,000 square feet. 21,000 square feet. That is going to devalue every single one of these houses and this land for any future development of residential because nobody's gonna wanna build a house next to a 21,000 foot light industrial plant. And while he says there won't be as much traffic as at a storage unit, a storage unit people maybe go to once a week, maybe once a month, twice a week, that's not near as many cars as or semis, and he's already got semis going up the back way. You can see here on this aerial picture, There's he's got a, a road that goes around the back, and all these bins are gone now. There, there's no structures left on that land. So just to show how close these houses are, this is the one directly across the road. That's how close it is. This is the next one down the road. This is looking north from the driveway into the field and all you see is residential houses. This, this road has, this area has been residential forever. And Mr. Nelson knew that when he bought this property. And don't get me wrong, I, I know development is happening. I know we are close to Sioux Falls. I know we are close to Harrisburg. But this is three miles west of Harrisburg. And this bridge, it's not a very good picture, but this is the bridge on the Township Road. It was built in 1934. This is a Township Road that is not going to hold up to heavy trucks carrying prefab wall units. So I would just reiterate that this is definitely a residential area. It's residential. And think about if that was your home across the road, which would you want? I mean, storage units is one thing. But once it gets his own light industrial, he can do whatever he wants. There is a place for light industrial. It's not in a residential area. There's an industrial park in Northwest Sioux Falls, and that, that's the place to do that. That's the area that's built for this type of home. So I would urge you to decline this application. Thank, Thank you, you, Deb. Thank you. All right, I'll ask anybody else in opposition of the application come forward. Don Hoffman, uh, 47331, 273rd Street. Uh, I farm the Bennett and Luella de Young's property on the north side. Uh, Toby, could you pull up that map that shows that the other developments and with Nine Mile Creek through there and all that?
Okay, uh, I think he said 2019, they applied for the commercial district for that area. I sat in the same room right here, county commissioners. There was supposed to be a ditch placed on the north side of his property so the field to the north would drain because he's going to haul in dirt. I sat here and listened to engineers tell me that they were going to dig a, a retention pond along Nine Mile Creek. And that dirt was going to be used to raise this area where they were going to do the storage units. They were offsetting. Dig a hole, haul your dirt there. That's what they were going to do. By God, I don't know. My glasses must not be working because I don't see it. I, I'm over there. We farm that farm. There's no ditch along the north side. There's no ditch that was dug along Nine Mile Creek. And for God's sake, we've heard enough about Nine Mile Creek, the flooding issues we've had and everything. But there's three or four feet of fill dirt there. Who's enforcing the regulations? I sat in this room listening. What was going to be done? People made commitments. Yeah, we're going to dig this out. We'll fill that in. We're going to put you a, a ditch in there so that water drains. BS. It's not done. And now we're sitting here and going to change the, the district to something else when he hasn't fulfilled the last district, the commitments that he was made. Who's enforcing the regulations? We just keep letting people do what they want. You know, I haven't lost many beans out of that field. You know, maybe an area the size of this room this year. If I get a four or five inch rain, I'm going to have four or five acres under water back there. You know, maybe it's no big deal to everybody else, but it is to me. That's my livelihood. And to me, it's here where the rules and regulations should be enforced. And if you're not going to follow the rules and regulations that you committed to three, four years ago, why are we asking for something else now? Plain and simple. You do what you say you do, or you don't proceed ahead. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else in speaking opposition of the application? All right, with that, I will close the floor to public comment, and I will ask for a motion from the board so we can have a discussion. Actually, can we ask Mr. Nielsen about that issue of the ditch not getting done? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um. Listening to the landowners, because it's really this the two uh, that are opposing of the same party to the north. I do strongly disagree about the drainage ditch. I'll meet anybody out there, including you, if you would like to see if it drains off of your property. And regarding not following the rules and doing what I said, I would also meet you and any engineer that wants to, because the pictures that you showed semis coming in from the back road, it's because we were hauling all the dirt out of the parcel to the east side lowering that elevation allowing all the nine mile creek to flood into that parcel of land that's where all the dirt came from to put into that location so i firmly am happy to meet anybody i need to on site to show i do agree there's weeds there i mean that part is needs to be addressed take care of but as far as being done right and doing what i said i was going to do it has been and i'm happy to meet on site as needed does that water flow to the to the east there? Yep, so right along the gravel road, the field to the north drains directly into my property, always has. We yeah. took a dozer day one and cut that drain past the grain bends and down to the draw around there. Down to the draw. That was the first the... spot. That was the first thing we did before we started hauling any dirt in was to cut that trench in there. Is it final grade and 100% done? No, but is it cut out to drain? Yes. And it's viewable to even walk. Which way? Which way is the water supposed to go there? The water is supposed to, like, if you're right along the gravel road coming from the field to the north, it falls yeah. into our property as you go south, and yeah. then it hits south. It goes back to the east towards the grain, what used to be the grain bends, and there's yeah. a lowest spot in the the Llewellyn's old property that that would drain around. So it'd be just the east side of the red on the map is where the water drains around and goes back 
just like it always kind of has. It just said it went straight south before, and now it goes south and east to get to the same location. And there was no ditch ever proposed on Nine Mile. It was the property that I own adjacent to it that we lowered, and there's engineering from this building and my engineers that how it's supposed to happen. So that water coming off of that piece of ground heading to the south, that water is supposed to go back to the to the east in your drain in your in the low spot of that, that field. Yeah. Is that do you think there should be a little ditch put there to get that water to go that way better or not or yeah when we final grade the spot well it'll get even further but i mean it's not done and i mean the elevation of the this the four acre site isn't done but like i said we just cut a spot trying to make sure that i didn't employ our neighbors to the north i mean i understand them farming i farm as well so i mean nobody wants their property flooded and i felt like we addressed that and had it cut out so the dirt you hauled on that property to raise it up that come from the that come from the east there and you own all that property you had a big hole dug in there well we, we just 15, took 10 15 did, years ago when you bought that and yeah the, that, that. If I may. getting out of my 15 16 we dug this out via the core approval and everything and brought it up here and raised these parcels so it was buildable and then we lowered all of this area in here and in here, 2020-ish, and hauled it through this trailer over here. But this dropped down. Some of the spots, we lowered it two to three foot. Some of it was only a foot and a half. But that's the material that we created to be over there. When my Nine Mile Creek backs up, we all know what kind of floods back through this big slough. Well, now it can flood all the way up through here. And it does. This whole parcel and in one inch rain gets wet and obviously gets full water in it or three inch rain. So it did work the way it was supposed to. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, I'll ask for a motion and then we can have as many you know, conversations as long as it takes from, from after that. Just so we can have a discussion, I'll make a motion to approve just for discussion. I guess I'll second it for discussion. All right, we have a motion second. All right, commissioners, who wants to start the discussion? Well, I, I just live a couple miles north of this property, live there for 40 some years. Um, I, it's, it's a wet piece of ground. I mean, that that's wet. We've had troubles with nine mile Creek in there. Um, I've been, I've I drive down that road quite a bit. I see he's been hauling dirt out of there in the last couple of years or whatever. Um, I don't know how that lays and sits, but if he's going to do that, he's going to need, I think he's going to need to put a ditch along the north side of his property and the south side of, of uh, Bennett Luella's there because we're going to have water coming off of that, off of that property. I don't know how he's going to drain it, but, but I haven't really seen any sign of any ditch there in the last year and a half. I mean, going that way. And maybe the water does drain that way. I, I don't know. I don't really think it does the way it sits right now because I know there's been water in previous, in over the years that have sat there and this and that. So I think there does need to be some drainage done there that heads to the, that heads back to the east. But if he haul all that dirt out of there, there, there should be enough area there to take care of that there but he needs to be able to get the water back there and like he said the final drainage deal isn't done yet you know the final grade and everything isn't done so but there definitely has to be a ditch put back through in there somehow for for something that's that's why i look at it and toby when he was approved for the commercial 
it, it was, he was supposed to have a ditch, correct? So I believe, Toby, correct me if I'm wrong. So when we do a rezone, we can't put drainage or anything on there. We're just rezoning it. We can't. We can't put stipulations. When he comes for a conditional use permit no, later to build it, then we can do all that. Yeah, that's. We did. We did approve in conjunction with the rezone a subdivision type plan. Right. What makes this a little complicated now is we've lost subdivision authority. It's gone to the city of Harrisburg now. So um, at that time, and I'm still working with staff from the city of Harrisburg to see how we would proceed with that part of it. Um, but at that time, is that the 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 uh, landowner agreed to do some site improvements, some ditching along that north end. But as was stated, I mean, there's been really no construction activity. There's been no building permits issued. Um, and as you're aware, as Lincoln County doesn't have a grading permit, so there's really nothing for us to regulate at this time other than the assurance that that was the subdivision plan that was engineered to go through. But that was approved, correct? So. Who are you talking to with Harrisburg? Mike. Mike, yep. yep. So, Toby. I don't know if the DeYoungs completely understand this, or, I mean. Can I comment? Well, the work hasn't been done, you know, in conformance with the plan, but there's been no really activity that's been yeah. done out there. There's been nothing that's required at that stage. But the argument is that's that was the agreement, and it goes back to, you know, I worked with them to, to, to come up with the resolution when it was fully engineered. It just hasn't gotten to that point where nothing's been built there yet that requires it. It's been an ongoing process, but, I mean, there's been nothing that's been undertaken to, to do that. There's been, you know, great, there's been fill in that, and there's been some some of that ditch, but, you know, nothing to full, final completion yet, which grading and that work doesn't get done until the building's built done. So, I mean, it's, but, but again, I don't want to make, it's complicated in the aspect that now Harrisburg has jurisdiction over this and they could say, well, we don't want a ditch or we want a bigger ditch or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're still working through that process. At this stage, you're just looking at conceptually is the rezoning in conformance with, with your comprehensive plan. And then beyond that is, is that if, if so approved, there will be a conditional use permit and that will, will be a staff recommendation whether or not Harrisburg takes jurisdiction of the subdivision or not, we're still going to make a recommendation that it follows what we originally approved. So, okay. Kelly, have you talked to the city of Harrisburg at all? Just because it's kind of, Toby did mention it in the conversation. Kelly, any, any conversations? Can we use a microphone, please? Sandy and I did come to a meeting here and visit with Toby and some of his staff regarding this subject, but we walked away from it not thinking that that was what Toby or the county would want us to do is go to the city and stir the pot because we weren't sure if this was going to be looked at as a subdivision or not is the way I understood the conversation. So if I'm incorrect on that, I'm fine. But I mean, I, could, I know Mike well and I'm that host Harrisburg staff. It's not like I wouldn't or visit well, with I'm planning and zoning there, so. Gotcha. Just wondering if you had talked to them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just sit close to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we we had we had uh, asked if you had visited with the township. I think your response was that you hadn't yet, and and um, I would. I knew, but I guess I kind of forgot that you're on the you're on the board of supervisors of La Valley Township. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the what what's La Valley's take on this? I guess I guess no, Del Delpery. Or, oh, you're in, that's in Delpery. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure, in Delpery. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. They they contacted me. He didn't. I forget who it was. Called about putting a driveway a culvert in the driveway there, uh, three four years ago when you guys put that in. And we okayed that, and well, we talked about it last winter or something. We got, I think, we had some. I don't, I don't know how it come up. And uh, as far as traffic goes on that road, I mean, it, it's a lot of traffic on that road anyway, just due to the first development. Mm -hmm. And I guess we feel we can probably, as a township, we can probably handle it as far as that goes. 
that's kind of the way it was talked about at that point in time. Okay. So, I mean, I even think, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was him, probably wasn't him, but somebody even talked about wanting the blacktop part of that road the first few hundred feet. And at that point in time, we told them we didn't want to mess around with that at that point in time. So that yep. kind of gets to be a few other situations that can enter in there. That's so, nice at first, like expensive later. Well, if they do it, they have to take care of the blacktop, keep it up. That's We got a little deal written up that they have to, once it's blacktop, we'll keep the snow off it and spray the ditches and mow the ditches a little bit. But as far as that goes, they have to take care of the blacktop yep. from then on. So, Thanks, Ron. So, okay. yeah, I'm... I, uh, I'm I guess where I stand on this, I disagree that this 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 uh, that that this uh, goes along with our current comprehensive plan. The way I understand our comprehensive plan, when I read it, is is that uh, this type of zoning should be concentrated right on our interstate exits and around our municipalities. Um, obviously, uh, there's there's been planning commissions and there's been board of county commi or county commissioners that have went past that, right? And we continue to go past that and we see this in other areas of the county as well. And and this is the type of discussion that comes up when 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 we try to go outside of that recommendation is is we get pushback because in my personal opinion, there's a lot of things we don't know yet. And um, whether that's township, uh, How's how's the how's the residential land going to be going to be taken care of um, in the future and so on and so forth and you know there's discussion right now that we will maybe redo that comprehensive plan but currently today that's all we have to go off of and um, I've stuck with that because it, to me personally it makes sense um, and I think if we keep making exceptions to that we just keep opening more cans of worms and more problems down the road and so you know yeah it's it's uh, a portion of that has been has been rezoned um, again now we're asking to rezone to industrial another thing that concerns me when we do these types of things is is once we rezone it we rezone it and and it, it can open it up to a lot of different things right and even though um, you know currently uh, there's a lot of traffic on that road. If if that's the only access point, I guess I'd like to see some more foresight through that. And I, I realize that that would come later on, but I think it's something you have to think about before you do it. I don't think we just do it and then say, okay, yeah, we'll fix that later. Um, so me personally, um, I'm going to stick with what how I interpret the, the comprehensive plan um, currently. And uh, hopefully we wait and and we 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 get this effort to update our comprehensive plan so we all have a little more guidance and there's some more thought put into these types of things and so that's uh, you know I'll, I'll i'll have a hard time supporting it tonight and me being on the city of harrisburg planning and zoning also and i'm looking at this and with already a question of the drainage drainage is a big thing for us um, I, I, I would rather see that taken care of before we, we move forward with anything. I, I won't be supporting this tonight. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with uh, Commissioner Scott down there that uh, when you're going from just commercial to light industrial, that kind of opens up a, another whole can of worms there to a degree. And uh, that's... And then I, I do have an issue with the drainage too. Um, um, I farm around this area and I'll tell you the water problems we've had in the last 10, 15 years or just just something else with the com with the commercial properties with uh, with all the building that's going on. And they I don't think I don't think he's done quite what probably said he was going to do to begin with, although he's not done with the project. 
but that was commercial. Now this is going to light industrial, and and I just I don't think I I can support that tonight either. You know, I agree with everyone up here. Um, I just I understand a thousand percent where you have a piece of land and you have a business and you do want to put up something to make that business better, uh, bring more employees and all that. I just feel that spot on the gravel road just off the highway next to residential next to ag it's just not the spot um i i still i keep sticking with that i just i don't think this spot the impact it will have with the residential neighbors with the ag development around there the township um drainage i know that's not something to fa factor in but um yeah I, i'm in the same boat with the rest of the commission so unless there's any more uh, discussion, I'll do a roll call. All right, now this is uh, to approve the rezone. So say yes or no. Commissioner Hogan? No. Commissioner Scott? No. Commissioner Albers? No. And Commissioner Jungley is a no. And um, so again, this is a, a rezone. So our recommendation is to the board and then the board of commissioners actually make the final decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you can appeal and talk to them. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. All right, Mr. Brown, item number two. This is where I was messed up on LaValle Township, Ron. <laughs> so oh. I think this next deal's in LaValle. <laughs> all, all the rest are in LaValle. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's where I was confused. Ron's got to stay, though. You can't leave now. That you're <laughs> okay. Uh, the second is an application from Bernie Bonson on behalf of the Bernie Bonson Trust, or B Trust. Um, this is uh, the location of this is approximately one and a half miles southwest of the city of Harrisburg. Uh, parcel size, uh, the sending parcel is 80 acres and the receiving parcel is 40 acres. Uh, did not receive uh, what I would call a, a site plan that shows the exact breakout or location of where the eligibility will be placed. Um, however, it'll be somewhere in the 40 acre parcel there. Um, this was generally the site plan that was submitted with the application just showing it going from the 80 uh, to that area. I guess, it, sorry, I take that back. It does show the 10 acres split being in the northwest uh, portion of the, of the 40 acres. Uh, so the purpose of this application is to transfer one building eligibility uh, from the 80 acre piece to the 40 acre piece. Uh, the application was reviewed for conformance with um, the, uh, the ordinance requirements as far as um, contiguous ownership um, and the different criteria that's established within the ordinance. Uh, so staff did review that in the staff report. Uh, staff did determine that this application is in conformance with the Conference of Plan and Zoning Ordinance and recommends the, the four conditions that were placed in the staff report if this application is approved. Um, the applicant, I sh believe, should be on the phone tonight to answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Staff or Council, do you have any commit? Any question for Toby? <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, here. All right, this time I'll ask the applicant, I believe is on the phone, to state their name, address, and tell us more about the application. Hi, my name is Brett Merkel. Um, I'm at 47236, 274th Street, Harrisburg. Um, <clears throat> I'm a realtor and an attorney, and I represent Bernie Bonson, uh, the trust. Um, you know, several years ago, um, we actually moved the eligibility from this 40 over to the 40 to the east of there, and that was for the purposes of a sale. And that all went well, and now Bernie is selling another 40-acre parcel, and so he's going to move this eligibility from that 80 over to this 40. So basically he's just replacing the one that had been moved before. Um, so there shouldn't, <clears throat> shouldn't be any... Um, issues with moving it over, basically just moving it over a few feet to the east from one line to the next on that 40 from the 80. And it's to facilitate a sale is what he's doing. And that's 
That's about it. Got any questions for me? Thank you very much. Commissioners, any question for the application applicant? No. Uh, Brad, uh, one question. Um, so the 40 to the east, um, that has, so does that have three eligibilities now? Yeah, there was some moved, uh, one moved from this 40, and mm -hmm. then there was also a, a couple moved from um, the parcel to the south of there. Okay. And that's on the 40 acres uh, that would be in the corner of Minnesota Avenue and 275th, uh, just adjacent to the east. So the two the you. the two plats here, this Jennifer Leniger or however you say it, are those each yeah, have Leninger. Leninger, do those each have a housing eligibility as well? Um over on that other forty, yes. Okay. Um, so on this forty there's none. Four. So there's so this would be the only one on this forty. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, if there's no further questions, good, Commissioner Scott? Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank and at you. this time, I'll ask anybody in favor of the application come forward and speak. All right, I'll ask anybody in opposition of the application come forward and speak. Seeing none, I'll close the floor to public input. And I will ask for a motion from the from the board. I guess I'll make a motion to approve Elbers. A second. All right, motion a second. Do we have any discussion? I get, I, Toby, I just got a question. Do you you guys got that all straight up there in the in the corner <laughs> where all these eligibilities came from? Okay. Yes. Yep. So you're you're comfortable with the with the number and where they came from and whose they were and so forth. Correct. I see Jen shaking her head. So. I trust her opinion. <laughs> she's she's double checked the marks. <laughs> <laughs> so there is just one there. Well, I, th I think Commissioner Scott's talking about the additional eligibilities further east. Oh, if okay. we really focus on tonight, there's an 80 that has two. He's moving the one over, so that's yes, that's there. And then we've researched the how the other ones got transferred and moved, and that all checks out. So correct. Yeah, just making sure we aren't keep moving the same ones. I guess. <laughs> That's all I'm wondering. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and and the way way it looks, uh, item number three in the in the conditions, or item number two is is that uh, um, you know all access to the to the public roads must be approved by the appropriate road authority, which I would assume would be La Valley Township. All right, so with that, um, I'll do roll call. I just want to say one thing quick. I think that this is, we've been at all the talks about transferring eligibilities, and I think this is the one time where, or the reason time is working just the way we thought it would and it's supposed to. Yeah. So with that, uh, roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. Commissioner Jungley is also a yes. Congratulations. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Item number three, Mr. Brown. Okay, item number three, uh, the applicant for this item is Jaron Properties LLC as well as the property owner for this application. Um, property, subject property is adjacent to the city of T. City of T is, this is just to the southwest of the, of the, the county airport, the T, minus, the T airport. Um, and so the city of T is annexed around this property. Um, subject property is zoned I-1 light industrial. And um, the applicant, or the parcel size is 1.96 acres in size, is currently vacant. Uh, the applicant also owns the property directly to the north 
And so the north is improved very similar to what this application is with a contractor shop and then a storage unit on the property. It'll essentially just be reversed on this property. Um, and so uh, this is the site plan concept plan that was submitted with the application. Again, just showing that the contractor shop would be um, on this side of the property and then the, the, the warehousing or storage would be on this side of the property. Uh, so staff did review this application um, and, and, and what's the conditions within the zoning regulations. Uh, staff did identify that this application is in conformance with the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan. Um, and this is primarily for the construction of a 20,000 square foot contractor shop and then also 9,500 square foot warehousing building. Since property is owned I-1 Light Industrial, the applicant can go up to 20,000 square feet for warehousing. So essentially this conditional use permit is primarily just for the contractor shops, but we're locking in the, the, the um, site plan that was submitted with the application. Um, and so if approved, staff does recommend uh, the five conditions that were included in the staff report. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff on this application. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Okay, thank, thank you, Toby. All right, with that, I'll ask the applicant to come forward and talk a little bit more about their proposal. Thank you, Commission, for having me tonight. I'm Craig Winia with uh, here representing Jaron Properties tonight because, uh, and Jerry Myatt, the owner. So, yes, we're uh, proposing this 20,000 square foot shop complex uh, contractor shop building. Um, on the, would be on the west side of the property. It is just a tad bit smaller, I believe, in overall width than our prior building on to the north. Um, the prior building was 100 and, or 108 wide by 220, I think, long. And this one here is 100 wide by 200 long. And then we all are also are proposing that uh, we do a storage shed building to the east of it. Um, and that would be mainly RV storages and we'd put our own personal shop storage for snow removal equipment and those items into that building. So we're not currently taking up our own personal shop space that we have in that primary building, the first building. Um, I think one of the questions is, is on the property there was uh, talk of I think, and maybe Jen can help me with this, or Toby can, is there was uh, a discussion about the amount of driveways we can have off of Manville in this property. Um, it originally was designed for JJ one to three access points off Manville. And I think by the, is it by the conditional, or by the codes or whatever, that we can only have two off of Manville. And so we're actually asking to get that third one for that RV building for our snow removal equipment because otherwise to access it, we'd have to reconfigure the building layout on the lot. And we prefer the layout that we submitted in the drawings for our layout because then, as you can see, is in the overall picture of it, we have a lot of people that park commercial trailers and different things on our property there too. And we kind of like to keep them confined between the buildings so it's not kind of an eyesore issue when people are driving by because we do want to make it look tidy and clean too in the same aspect. Toby, is that something he's got to talk to the township, right? Is that what that's on? Well, on? It's, it's actually, it's a private road. So he's oh. got to talk to the road association mm -hmm. or the group that's handling okay. it. And it's Landmark Industrial Park. Part of it's in the city limits too, so I don't quite know who that, but that's not our jurisdiction to decide that tonight, okay. so. All right, Commissioner, is there any uh, questions for the applicant? So I, I got one. So you saw the five conditional use permits and you're okay with, or the five conditions with the permit? I did not <clears throat> see that. That would have been something that I believe was submitted to JJ okay. on that. What were the five conditions? So my one thing I just got mentioned here too is, as you see from the picture, you talked about contractor trailers and all that being stored outside. I believe part of this does says the property shall have not shall not have unsecured storage. So Out, which means outdoor a, storage. What's that? Outdoor storage specifically. Right. Yeah. Right. So and I see there's a lot of trailers and. Mm -hmm. stuff parked around it's, the building that is would be considered outdoor storage but it is we do have security cameras on the buildings 
securing those areas. I mean, if we have to put a fence up on the property, it's been discussed. So. Okay. Yeah, I know. I just yeah, yeah, but I mean that if we pass this, that's what the condition says: is is that uh, the property shall not have unsecured outdoor storage. So we'll secure it at that time with a fence okay. surrounding the property. That's not an issue. Yeah. So then, basically, if you plan on, so you understand, if you plan on storing anything outside, there'll have to be a fence around yep. it. Okay. And that's fine because it's it's a lot of it is our commercial truck. Mm -hmm. trailers of our own personal use and having them secured at night would just be a peace of mind for ourselves so good okay. so my, that was my only concern yeah yeah, yeah just so you understand, so you yeah, understand fine. that no, and you already good. said you wanted to conform to the site plan you submitted and yeah. that was the first the I first did. condition so i got this thrown at me just a week ago so i was like <laughs> you, just agree, you just agree to it they i'm just doing it later right <laughs> <laughs> you just agreed to come talk to us. Lucky you. How many fences you want to build? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, does the guy want to put that fence in there then? To have a secured fence in it's, there? It's, so um, it, it should it be part of condition It says on there, any fencing two. installed shall be completely opaque. It says that the property shall not have unsecured outdoor storage. Any fencing installed shall be completely opaque. Mm -hmm. okay. The chain link fencing around the property. So, yeah, if they just store RVs in the back, they just need to have a fence in, in the back. Correct. So it's, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Nope. You did great. Thanks, did guys. Great. <laughs> All right. At this time, I'll ask anybody in favor of the application, please come forward. All right. I'll ask anybody in opposition of the application, please come forward. See you none. All right. I'll close the floor to public comment and I'll ask for a motion from the commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve with the conditions and facts. With the five conditions and facts. I'll second. All right. Motion a second. Any uh, further discussion, commissioners? All right. I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan. Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. And Commissioner Jumling is also a yes. Congrats. Tell them you should get a bonus. You did good. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next is an application from Justin Zuroff, um, the property owner is Lincoln Area Transfer Station LLC and DRP Properties LLC. Um, subject property is approximately two or 2,000 feet to the west of the city of Worthing. Um, subject property is approximately 4.85 acres in size. Um, as you can see, the subject property is zoned I-1 Light Industrial. Uh, this site was the former site of the Lincoln County Transfer Station. Um, so the county operated it until I believe two or so years ago, did sell it to the current property owner. I believe the current property owners, we didn't get staff to get in the discussion, but I believe they're operating or planning to operate the transfer station still um, for uh, this is for uh, garbage waste uh, transfer station. Uh, the subject the application before you tonight. Uh, would be a conditional use permit to allow uh, motor vehicle and equipment sales on the property. Uh, specifically, they identified to staff that they have some medium heavy duty type equipment, trucks and, and uh, trailers and that type of equipment uh, that they would like to sell on the property. Uh, so staff did review the application. Uh, it is an allowable use um, in the I-1 Light Industrial District through the C Commercial District. There really is no set standards for motor vehicle sales, equipment sales. Um, so we staff just generally identifies what the surrounding area and property uh, looks like at the time. Uh, so through the staff analysis and the staff report, uh, staff did identify that this that the proposed application would be in conformance with the comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance, primarily because of the current zoning and surrounding properties uh, of the current zoning and the surrounding property zoning. Uh, if approved, staff does recommend though that there be four conditions placed on the permit, and those conditions were within the staff uh, report analysis. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for staff on this application. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? Is the is the is the applicant leasing or renting this property from 
the from the Lincoln Area Transfer Station LLC, or are they purchasing it? They're, they're, they are the owners. Yeah. Oh, they are the owners. Yeah, okay, the, same people. Yeah, it's an Got LLC it. that owns the property, but makes sense. They're, they're part. I should say they're part. They're part of, the, of the LLC. Yeah, part of Got the it. LLC. Yeah. Okay. So yep. And their site plan is that the picture with the. Yep. So they're showing the right parking. There. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my understanding is is that most of the activities would be conducted within the building, okay. so it's not going to be like you know equipment all over. It's you know for sale. It's primarily going to be stuff that's within the building or okay. inside the building. And then there would be some. Uh, they, they've identified that there would be parking on the premises for their staff and for visitors and and, and those different types of things. So, so it does meet the limited standards that the county has for motor vehicle equipment sales. It does. It does meet those standards. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. At this time, I will ask the applicant to come forward and talk a little bit more about their proposal. All right. We're just looking to do like kind of small scale, a couple little truck sales. Could you could you give your name and home oh, address, please? Uh, Justin Zeraf. It's for two seven nine eight eight four seventy first Street, Worthing. So just looking for um, to do. A little bit of equipment sales on the side there. Um, you had that map that Toby pulled up in the northwest corner there where we signaled off in that lower shop. Um, that seems to meet the state criteria for the um, minimum five parking spots for the equipment intended use to sell. Uh, there's a little office in there too for keeping files and storage as required by the state as well. So nothing too big scale, just a couple of things here and there. Okay, thank you, Justin. Uh, is, commissioners, questions? Is, is the property still being used as a transfer station? Or? So, uh, <laughs> we're waiting on the state, so. What's that? We're waiting on the state for whatever, but that would be the other main building, uh, the one on built into the hill. Yep. That would be the transfer station. This is a, kind of the shop down below there, so. So, uh, uh, ultimately, what you want to do is you want to you operate the the two businesses off of there, the transfer station and the dealership. Is that what you're? Yeah. Yes. I mean, the dealership's not going to be. I mean, no, I'm just trying to get I mean, my head. It's not going to be like a full blown thing. I mean, it's a little more than a hobby, perhaps. So. Okay. And wh and what are you selling? Just, uh, just like trucks, like so. pickups or semis or. Well, no, kind of stick to what you know. So garbage trucks and okay tractor trailers and yes, got it. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And is there a I'm thinking you ruse, right? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. I was like, that that name sounds familiar. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. With that, I'll ask anybody in favor of the application, please come forward and speak. Seeing none, I'll ask anybody in opposition of the application, come forward and speak. Marlene Sweeter, 47158, 283rd Street, Worthing, uh, Lynn Township. And I'm here on behalf of Lynn Township uh, as their clerk. Um, I guess we just, we had not had any conversations with Mr. Zuroff as to what is going to happen there. Um, that's a pretty limited area. Um, is it going to take a lot of extra traffic on the road? Um, there's not been any discussion with the township to say what's going to happen um, exactly on that area, and I guess the township is somewhat concerned. Is, I mean, I realize it was the transfer station and garbage trucks went over it, but if we're going to do car sales or truck sales, are there bigger trucks than garbage trucks? What kind of trucks, what kind of sales are there? Uh, and how much more traffic is that going to put on that road? So that's our main question. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll ask and get an answer for you. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else in opposition of the application tonight? All right, seeing none, I'll close the floor. And uh, maybe before we ask for a motion, could, Justin, could you address uh, the, the question? Um, so what? how much uh, added increase of traffic are you thinking and you know, with, with the trucks and all that? Not much at all because it, like, we'd only have like a couple on hand and 
not looking for people coming in and out at all times. It's not going to be like a car dealership where people come and look at Lou. I mean, it's going to be other business owners that either want a truck or not, you know. So, is it just going to be garbage trucks? Is that it? Or? Garbage trucks, maybe dump truck. It's kind of <laughs> stuff I'm, we're looking for. So that's about it. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Yep. All right, commissioners. Um, unless there's any additional quite well, we can ask for a motion and then we can ask questions also. Uh, yeah, um, I guess I have a question before we make a motion um, okay. because it might be a condition. Toby, is is there, I have a question, is there a, a limit uh, based on this permit, how many vehicles can be on site for sale at one time? No. No, so it could be unlimited? Yeah, we, we typically don't um, put a limit on them. Some we'd have. I shouldn't say we've never done it, but we typically don't. So. One, two, three, four, five. I wonder if just that wouldn't maybe be a good idea. At one time or like? What's that? At, yeah, like, like at one, one time. time yeah, so there's not like 100 trucks there for sale or something, you know? Okay, I'll defer to the applicant maybe if you want to ask him how many. Yeah, I was just curious there. if that came along with it. Nope. No. Okay, so that would be my next question. Justin, could you, could you, you want to come back up here a second? Um, so you, you had made mention of maybe five? The, that's the state's uh, minimum parking requirement that we have available. Okay. So how many and trucks do you think you're going to have on just site? Just like one or two at a time. Okay, like nothing, so. Nothing big scale, like I said, a little more than a hobby. I mean, okay. that's about it. So like you'd be okay with if we added a condition that no more than five at one time? Yeah, or? that's fine. You'd be fine with that? Yeah, okay. I don't want anything bigger there anyway. That would be okay. a, a cluster. Yeah. So, yeah. I okay. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So I'm gonna, uh, Mr. Chairman. Is it, sorry. Does anybody else have any questions? No. No. You sure? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna move that uh, uh, that we approve with the added condition, uh, added conditions. I'm gonna add two conditions. One that uh, we limit it to. Um, Five vehicles for sale at any one time, and that they uh, that they meet with the appropriate road authority and just just get approval on what they're going to do. All right, thank you. We have a motion, uh, Mr. Brown. Can we make that meeting with a maybe? Is, can we have a condition that he has to work with a road authority, or can it be a, a suggestion? Well, I. Th I th I think I'm supportive of that. It just says meet with the appropriate art authority. I Great. think that's appropriate. Yeah. Great. So we have a motion for the uh, written down rules and with um, Mr. Scott's two more. We have a second. I'll second it. Elber's second. All right. Further discussion? All right, so to just be clear for the record, we'll have a motion with the uh, existing. It's an existing five um, conditions, I believe. Boy, it's not even, my Four. brain's not even working today. What's the word? Conditions. That's, that's where we're at. <laughs> so existing the, conditions, and we're adding two more conditions. Correct. One added, added condition is no more than five vehicles for sale at a time. Hmm. And the second added condition that the owner work with the township to keep the road functional and up to date. Yeah, just yeah, just just meet with them, tell them what you're going to do, and and you guys have communication. I mean, I just think that um, it's it's just there as some teeth for the township, so that that they uh, just keeps communication open. And anytime we keep communication open, I think things go better. So. All right, with that, I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. Commissioner Jungling is also a yes. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah I think that that's a, um, you've noticed it twice tonight is that 
um, you know, we're sending notices now to all township officials. And I think that's good. I think they're they're participating and showing up. And yep. And in addition to that, if they can't, they can certainly call our office and we can facilitate some of that discussion too. But I think that's this has been a good result of that. So. Awesome. Yep. I think that's good. That's exactly Thanks for doing that too, yeah. Toby, and your office. I, I just think that, like I said, anytime we can keep communication mm -hmm. open and, and have more people aware of what's going on, I just think that we can, things yeah. go better. Yep. Okay, uh, this next item is an application from Philip Hergert um, on behalf of the property owner, which is the uh, Hergert Family Trust. Uh, this uh, property is approximately 1.6 miles uh, southeast of the city of, or northeast, sorry, of the city of Lenox. Um, subject property is approximately 9.22 acres in size. Uh, the property is developed with um, a single family dwelling and an, an outbuilding, um, and then a portion of the outbuilding, I believe, that they're taking down, or, or it's another part of it. So or a shed that's on that part of it. So the applicant is proposing to build a 2,100 square foot accessory building on the property uh, because this property is a one agricultural zoned and it's within a subdivision of more than four lots. It does require a conditional use permit. Um, I, as I, I've mentioned previously, there is really no set standards for an oversized accessory building other than over 1,500 square feet does require a conditional use permit from the county. So there's no specific standards or, or uh, conditions or requirements. So staff did review this application. Uh, staff did identify uh, that this application is in conformance with the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance. Primarily, as I previously mentioned, that there really is no set standards for it. Uh, so staff does identify that this construction of this building uh, would be in conformance with the regulations and if approved recommend the six conditions that were placed in the staff report um, and as i i'll add to that is that we we do have the property owner did send notification within 500 feet we also do post the property it also went to all the township officials staff hasn't received any communication regarding this application as of tonight so with that i'd be happy to answer any questions that you have for this application Thank you, Mr. Brown. Commissioner, is there any question for staff? All right, thank okay, you. Thank you. All right. I will ask the applicant to please come forward and talk about uh, what they'd like to do. Good evening. My name is Philip Hergert. Uh, my address is 46681 276th Street, uh, Lenox, and I'm wanting to put up a building, put my stuff in, <laughs> get it out of the weather. Yep. Uh, All right. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? No? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just sat closer. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't hardly worth the walk. All right, we'll get through this here. Uh, so uh, this time I'll ask anyone in favor of the application, please come forward. And seeing none, I'll ask anybody in opposition of the application, please come forward. Seeing none, I'll close the floor to public input, and I'll ask a motion from the commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve. With the conditions. The application with the conditions, yes. Yep. I'll second. All right, we have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All right, I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. And Commissioner Junglings also yes. Congratulations. <laughs> I look forward to driving by and seeing a really nice building. shop. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, this last application is an application from Daniel King, who is also the property owner. Um, the subject property is, is approximately 2,600 feet northwest of the city of Harrisburg. As you can see, it is within the, their, their growth area subdivision authority. Um, parcel size is 1.16 1, acres in size. Uh, this is within an established rural residential subdivision uh, to the northwest of the city of Harrisburg. Um, 
the applicant is proposing uh, it does the property does have an existing single family dwelling on the property and the applicant is proposing to construct a new accessory building which should be to what I'd call to the north of the house um, to be um, to be accessed directly off of Delarue Drive um, this uh, prop or the request is for a 1728 square foot accessory building again uh, since this property is zoned rural residential it, in a subdivision of more than four lots, it does require a conditional use permit, so there is no set standards for this for uh, conditions for review. Um, so staff did review the application um, in conformance with the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan, and staff did identify that this application is consistent with the comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance, and if approved, does recommend the six conditions that were placed in the staff report. Um, in addition to that is that we did place um, on the on, in front of you this evening that staff did receive a letter of support uh, for this application from one of the neighbors um, that neighbor could not be in attendance tonight so they did want that um, to be entered into the public record I guess okay. again uh, we did post property the applicant did send letters within 500 feet of the subject property and as of this evening staff hasn't received any communication regarding this application so that would have to answer any questions that you have on, on this application. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any questions for staff? No. Okay. no. See, Toby, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'll ask the next, I'll ask the applicant. All right, did did we want to read that letter into the public record? Uh, yeah, maybe after, yeah. Okay. All right, this time I'll ask the applicant to come forward and discuss about their proposal. My name is Dan King. I live at 27121 Dollar Route Drive. <clears throat> Looking to put up a building. Um, it's a 36 by 48. The reason I chose those dimensions are because it's standard dimensions. If I was to go smaller than that, it would have been considered more of a custom. So it was actually cheaper to go with the standard dimensions for the building. Sure. Um, the colors would match the uh, the house that's on the residence right now with landscaping to match the house. I did talk to the president of our road association to make sure it was okay with the road district, got approval there, and I did talk to each one of the neighbors that's directly around that property just to make sure that there wasn't going to be any animosity or any problems with it. And yeah, everybody was in was in approval with it. Um, yeah, I would consider myself in good standing with the neighbors, and I think they're already trying to fill it up with stuff if it gets approved. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <Build it. laughs> All right, uh, commissioners, any questions for Dan? No. no. Uh, I'll just make a comment. Thanks for thanks for uh, taking your due diligence, going around and talking to everybody, and 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 getting that out there. It makes things a lot easier. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, the people I got to live with, so I want to stay in good graces, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, and I was going to say the same thing. I know, uh, so I have asked a question. How big, how tall are the sidewalls going to be? The sidewalls? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I'm not too sure. Match the house? Yeah, you know, I think the the highest peak is like 20-some feet Oh, that's okay. I just, I, I just peak height gun, is twenty three feet. I'm just a little gun shy from the last one we approved, and end up being a very tall building. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So twenty three. Yeah, feet. there's a lot of stuff that goes on out there. I try to distance myself from that. That's too much drama for me. So I try to conform with the rest of the buildings that are next to me we appreciate your neighbors appreciate that too no we've got good neighbors it's a <laughs> good it was, support system so. wasn't it last year that somebody tried to move in there and wanted a bigger building and that was a big yes yes wonder, is that they wanted neighborhood? to start a business a out of yes. there yeah. yes and then yeah. there yes. was the one with the indoor basketball court and yeah this is yes. the same yeah. That's, that's why I was looking at this neighborhood going, isn't this the same neighborhood? But okay, okay. Yeah. His yeah, neighbors I'm are sure okay it with it. I, okay. <laughs> I try to stay out of that the best I can. Good call, Dan. Thank you Good very call. much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. With that, I will ask anybody in favor of the application, please come forward. 
I'll ask anybody in opposition of the application to please come forward. All right, I'll close the floor to public input and I'll ask a motion from the commission. Do you want to read the, the in favor Yeah, email? let's do that. That's a good time for it. <clears throat> All right, this written on July 5th, 2022. To whom it may concern, we are neighbors of Dan King and one of the most directly impacted properties of his proposed building. Our location of 27112 Dilrud Drive puts the proposed building just adjacent and in direct view of the front of our property. We do not know Dan well, but trust he will build with outward aesthetics that will not be detrimental to the neighborhood. We also do not have any issue with the building as it may be over the 1500 square foot requiring a public hearing, but is still within the similar structures of our neighborhood. Dan has been a good neighbor and we fully respect support his proposal. Robert Price. All right, so with that, I'll ask for a motion. I will happily make a motion to approve <laughs> with the findings in the in the conditions. You did see the conditions, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. I guess I don't recall them off the top of my head. Uh, I yeah, I guess I don't see anything that's, that's going to be an issue. Okay. okay. I'll second Scott. All right, motion is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. Commissioner Jungling is also a yes. Congrats and way to go, Shed. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay, uh, first item of new business uh, this evening. Um, so we did receive a building permit application uh, to build a single family dwelling on this property that I've, that I've shown on the screen here. Um, and as you're aware of through the process uh, for, for issuing a building permit for a single family dwelling, the ordinance does require that staff receive a right to farm covenant that's filed with the registered deeds office. And so typically, you know, we try to make sure that, you know, when we accept a building permit, we don't accept payment and that until after we reviewed it and, and then we can approve it. And typically then at the summer, right around that approval time as we have them go downstairs and file the, the right to farm covenant. This one got filed prior to all of that. And then for whatever reason, um, this is within Harrisburg's uh, platting subdivision authority. And so there was some issues with, um, you know, what city requirements and things like that. And for whatever reason, the applicant decided to withdraw the, the building permit application. And then at the same time requested staff that we remove uh, the filed right to farm covenant that was filed on the property. And per the ordinance staff, we can't do that. Um, the ordinance requires that the planning commission give consent um, and then that can be removed um, from uh, the property records. And so staff's in support of that. Um, you know, we think that, again, the ordinance is really uh, is a requirement to, to construction of a single family dwelling. That building permit was removed. There's no intentions to build it. If there ever was in the future, it would have to be refiled. But at this time, we're just asking for consent for you to take a vote. To, then we can show that to Registered Deeds and then get that, that right to farm covenant removed from that property. So, so <clears throat> this is what I'm following you, Toby. So, Basically, the timeline was is they filed for a building permit, um, and along with that, they were okay with the right to farm covenant, right? They they yep. said, yep, that's fine. Now they've decided they don't want to build, but that right to farm covenant is attached to that land, correct? Correct. Now, if they were to come back and build again, they'd have to file another right to farm covenant, correct? Correct. Okay. So we, we aren't... Just so I'm clear, uh, we aren't saying they, they can go ahead with their building permit without the right farm covenant. We're not, that's not the deal, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Does 
that make so will our next step do we make a motion and all that or yeah okay. just make a motion to to uh can gives consent to removal of the rate farm covenant where is this at again toby where did uh, you point this, at? this parcel right here just to the adjacent to the east of ah. the city of harrisburg okay um angers is the property owner of it huh. so is, is that who was was alan making yep. the building permit yes okay yeah and not to there was a lot of moving parts that i don't know all the details to what the issue became is there's already a dwelling on that parcel, mm -hmm. and so we require it to, to be separately platted. Right. And so then they had to go work with the city of Harrisburg, and for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, requirements or what, what it didn't really fit into the plans of the angers, and so they withdrew the building permit. So, so. they just decided to stay where they're doing what they're doing, and they're not going to build anything then? Correct. At this time. Yeah, At the, yeah right. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, commissioners, any discussion? Or we can ask for a motion to. I, yeah, I'm glad. I guess I'm just glad that's what it was. I for when I first read it, I thought it was somebody that was wanting to keep their building permit and just get out of having to sign the right to farm covenant. So, um, yeah. So I guess I'm in favor of it now. But. <laughs> I, I was too. I was like, why would we do this? Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> that confused. Would be a good, super <laughs> precedent, but. Um, so yeah, I guess unless anybody has any other discussion, I'd I'd sure make a motion. I'd I'd move to uh, uh, to go ahead and and remove the remove the right farm covenant um, on this parcel as staff is requesting. I'll second it, Elvers. All right, we have a motion, a second. Any additional conversation? See you none. I'll do roll call. Commissioner Hogan. Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Albers? Yes. And Commissioner Jungling is also a yes. Uh, one last item this evening. Um, so this is just my typical update of action that the Board of Commissioners have done since the previous meeting. So the only real action that they've completed is they did approve that your recommended uh, modifications to the medical cannabis regulations in the unincorporated area of the county. And so they didn't make any changes, they approved as is. And so that should become effective whenever it becomes effective in accordance with the statute. Um, the, the only other items coming up for the Board of Commissioners would, would be the two petitions that they have next, next week. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing is that so we have a new individual sitting in the back there. So this is Noah Watson. Noah Watson is our newest uh, planner. So Noah. Uh, Noah Watson. Yep. yep. Nice meeting, Noah. So, yeah. You got some help. <laughs> What's that? You got some help. We do. Yeah, he's been on board. I think two, three weeks now. It's it's going with the blur and stuff like that. But we're getting. You know, we went a year without having anyone. So it's really mm -hmm. kind of just you know finding our path and our groove and mm -hmm. stuff like that so good. but noah's been a good addition and it's good to have uh, somebody on staff so you'll be hearing more from him i promise him probably tonight we wouldn't have to talk or anything like that so <laughs> but we'll, at some point in time i'll throw him to the Wait woods till pretty next quick month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll have him handle rezones next time so, <laughs> so. So, uh, with that, that's all I had for this evening, unless you guys have any questions or well, comments. One question, Toby. We had, yep. uh, I think it was last month we discussed, uh, just had some open discussion on the comprehensive plan and maybe um, the recommendation of the commissioners that we would we would, we would would support um, do, doing, you know, updating yep. that. How, has, has there been any discussion, I guess, at the, at the commission level or um, have they, has, that, has that been talked about? Yeah, so I presented the department budget to the commissioners at a session, and they didn't make any comments at that time. I believe next week they'll pr pass a provisional budget and okay. a final so budget. So that's, that's where we're at with it. You've got yep, it in your I've budget. We've, we've re staffs requested it. Oh, perfect. So, okay. Yeah, so, so the ball's rolling on it. Yep. Yep. The intention is is that we did request a dollar amount that would allow us to hire a consultant to to really take it. You know, um, be the lead on that part of it. So and if that would get approved, how long would it take? Do you think? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Okay. Because I I think you know the real since it's a comprehensive type master plan, the real nuts and bolts of it is going through the process. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. and and I think as you've mentioned tonight, there's a lot of discussions and thoughts and. And I, you know, and I'm excited for that because I think it's finally that form that we can do that. Mm -hmm. 
you know, tonight in front of applications is never the time to talk about like what the new plan should be. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, so, but we do need to have that discussion at some point in time. So, yeah, I'm in hopes, but, you know, of course, you know, in, in defense of everything that's going on, there's a lot of needs right now with the funding that we have. And, and so, you know, I'm hopeful that that's what the request is, but there's no guarantee that that would be part of the final approval because mm -hmm. there is shortfalls and needs and other things that are out there too. So yep. if not, we'll find a way to move forward with it too. So, I mean, it's, we're committed to it. So, yeah. That would, so that would be one of my other questions. I mean, um, as a, I would call it almost a plan C or D, but um, <laughs> would, yeah. is, is it possible to just take parts of, I mean, if we had to, if we had to dumb it down, just to take the the most contentious parts of the of the comprehensive plan and just have those looked at, i.e., zoning and uh, you know housing, you know de rural densities of people and so forth. Yeah, I mean, you know, and you guys know it's maybe hard to do though if you aren't incorporating yeah. everything. The comprehensive plan is really kind of three parts to it. The first part is a current snapshot. You know, what's what's it look like right now? Mm -hmm. And, of course, what it looks like now is a lot different than it was in 2005 when right. we did it at that time. And then the second part of it is really kind of an inventory of all the needs that we have. And then the third part is really what's the most important part to you guys is the land use plan. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, where are we going? What's Where are we headed to with these things? And, and I think conceptually, I mean, you know, and you brought it up tonight too is, you know, when we stray outside of those areas, what you know, because again, the conference plan was adopted in 2005, and you know, it's not a static plan. I mean, there's things that'll change, and so really, when you're looking at a rezone, you need to look at okay, what does the plan say? But in a, in, a, in also regards is what does it do to the surrounding properties? You know, is it going to have a negative impact or a positive impact or no impact and those different types of and things? And I think so, that's where, at least speaking yeah. for myself, and I, I don't know if the other folks agree with me, but that's where. Um, I made the comment, there's just too many things we don't know, right? And, and so when we stray away from the comprehensive plan, we kind of, we, we open this, this thing where there's all these other things now that we, that we have to take into consideration in a very short period of time that somebody didn't take two years to think about and say, yeah. well, this is what's going to happen if you do this, right? And yeah, unfortunately, we're that that map is from 2005, but it's the only map we have. And um, and reading it, I I agree with it, but but I do th I would I would like an updated yeah an updated map, I guess, really, you know. Well, and I think, you know, the other parts of it, too, is is that we, we've also tackled a lot of the things. We adopted a master transportation plan, which is a major component of land mm -hmm. use planning, growth, mm -hmm. and things like that. And we've also adopted a master drainage plan. So a lot of those things are already done, so we really just need to focus on the land use part of it. But, you know, it, the land use part of it, and it's just kind of anecdotal, is um, the county board of commissioners, they, they dropped the speed limit on county 272nd, 106, you know, and that's gone both ways. I mean, people in support, people against it, you know, and stuff like that. But that's really a sign of the growth and the development that's occurring in that area up there and the traffic and the safety and the capacity and the grading of that road and things like that. So, I mean, it's all, you know, you know the neat thing about planning is we're really the only comprehensive long range thing in government, right? You know, most things is like, what's the budget? What do I have to spend next year for the services I need to provide? What, what we're looking at from planning wise is what 20 years from now is Lincoln County gonna, you know, where are we going with this thing and what do we want it to be is more important to me is you know that that you know you see this every month is is that the decisions you make can be yes no's they can be maybes you know so i mean it's 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 those decisions that are going to make the county the decisions we make today we realize the things that are happening now are the decisions that have been made 5 10 15 20 mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. right same thing the decisions we make tonight or what's going to be 5 10 15 20 years down the road and so, if anything, we want to make sure that those are done right for the health, safety, well for the public. Period. Yeah. So, but so thanks for letting me get my soapbox to talk about planning. I think you know. It's, no, we appreciate a lot. That. A lot yeah. of times, you know, we talk about the nuts and bolts of all this stuff, but there's a purpose for all of this. You know, it's not just making one person happy or a bunch of neighbors happy or a bunch of neighbors upset. It's really about what are we leaving this county to 20 years from now and the impacts it's going to have. You know. Yeah. And so. We're already feeling them right now. So, I mean, a lot of things. So, but. Yep. And I like the way we've been coming together the last year, two years, as far as really just, like you said, not making everyone happy. We're, we're trying to do the best we can with a 
fast growing. I mean, yeah, yeah we're, we're growing exponentially. It's and you can't make everybody happy. You just can't. The speed limit was a perfect example when you yeah. said that. You got everybody on both sides, and it's yeah. I just I still try to find out. It's like I'm going. And I was, oh, no, I gotta slow down. Gotta <laughs> Which slow road down. is this? They've been doing it for two seven one. Um, from two uh, from yeah, it's twenty nine over to Cliff. Oh, okay. Yeah, one hundred six yeah. or two seventy one. Busy road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, my Lanta, boy, people. Are so it's what now? Forty five. Forty five. Yeah. 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 Okay. My wife's been driving it for two weeks, and she goes, "You know that speed limit just dropped." And I go, "Yeah, two weeks ago." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't been picked up. She only drives it about four times a day. <laughs> well, you you turn and you go fifty five. That's all I hear. That's stupid. Why did they do it? Well, she goes, "Well, I wonder why them cars have been going on a slow set." <laughs> yeah, it's. it's I wonder why I'm blowing yeah. by people and passing people every day. <laughs> That's a great, I mean, growth is a good thing to have. It's just it needs it to be managed. Yep. And really, yeah. from from 271 to, like, black dog storage is still 55. That really could be, because then it goes down to 35. It really could be 45 to that, too, going into Harrisburg, because there's, there's houses there people are turning into. I mean, it's busy. It's, it's just so busy out there. Yeah. And I mean, they're real roads. The, yeah. the capacity is not for what they are. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, but, you know, that's that's a whole other department. That, and you know, I know but, people's yeah. in a hurry. Everybody's got somewhere to go so quickly. But but there's so much, you know, we talk about growth being dynamic and, and things like that. And, you know, the hardest part is, is that we're working with so many jurisdictions, Harrisburg, T, mm -hmm. you know, Sioux Falls and Lenox and Worthing and all of them. I mean, all the way down. That uh, that's why I think the conference of plan is, and I think you guys mentioned tonight, it's all about cooperation, communication, mm -hmm. coordination, and that's what really needs to take place if we want to keep facilitating what we have. You know, so, but you know, I'm excited for for whatever whatever A B C D we do at the conference of plan. I think we'll, we'll get there. We need to get there. Um, but plan A is what we've spent in the budget request now. So, Good. okay, thank you. Thanks, Toby. I'm just going to throw one more thing out there in my little soapbox. You know, all these things we plan, unless we have uh, fundings or put money into the roads, doesn't matter what the speed limit is. If right. the roads are bad shape and we can't afford to fix them, it's not going to do any good. That's mine. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll make all that those motion or can I? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else. No. no. Go ahead. I'll make, you, you, you I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> opposed? Thank you. Has anybody ever opposed?